morning. And today is very special day in Tajul because it's actually three seniors that will be speaking today and sharing you a story. So although today's speakers are graduating, um, their messages are not just for the seniors but for all of you guys who are sitting in this room. And I really hope that you guys can take something from it. Um, my hope and prayer is that this morning you just experience the love and grace that um, of Christ that has been shown through these three stories that we'll be hearing. Um, I'd like to share with you a little passage from Ephesians um, chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. And it says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and how long and how deep is the love of Christ, and to know that his love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure all, and all the fullness of God. So here are our three speakers for today. It's going to be Isabel Albert. So I'll just, whatever, I'll just pull off what I'm going to do and just be with him. But 
But um, it got to a point where there was no way he was going to recover from whatever he was going through. So I was, me being me, how I was before, it's some great 13 now, 13 year old me trying to decide my life at 13 years old. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to, my dad's like no longer part of my plans anymore. So I'm just going to go to college, bring my mom with me, my brother's going to go somewhere, and my dad's not going to be a picture anymore. Sounds like crazy now. After I say it out loud, it's like, wow, you have no part. But I did that. I did that. You guys can off that. It's okay. Um, as as he got worse, he ended up developing dementia, and it was like times where it's just like he had some good days, and there's times where he would look at my brother and be like, "Who's a stranger in my house?" Like, no, it just got that bad. And then I remember when I well, the night that it all went down. Um, he had a seizure, got was slipped into a coma, and then kind of it's kind of sad, but he kind of like died a painful death, sort of. I wish I could reverse it for him, but he did. He woke up in the coma, was in a lot of pain, passed away. It's long story short, I guess. So after that, and that was all night grade, I was like, well, did not see that coming. Like the major like hurdle just like got my neck. Like what? What am I supposed to do? Like how am I supposed to? Live my life around this. Like I literally like everything that I planned from seventh grade to ninth grade for my life, which was not my work, but I thought it was a great plan. It just all fell apart as soon as my dad passed away. I had no idea what to do. I, I like I was at a loss. I was in a dark place. I was in a bad moment. Like it's just. But I tried to reach out to friends, and my friends reached out to me because I immediately after he died, like told like a few of my friends and. I mean, I mean, like, they, they, they you know, they do the typical thing, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you want anything, can I put some for you, know, all that stuff, like, just like what nice people would do, and I was grateful for them, but it's just, I wasn't me, like, I wasn't myself, so, from, from that part, now, there's a good part of the story, so I'm just going to start right here, um, from there, I realized that no matter how well, how many times you plan out your life, or plan out the next thing you your life, next day, it's most likely going to fail. I mean, it is what it is. We're humans. We're flawed by nature. When we plan something, it doesn't go well because we try to do it ourselves. And that's the one thing that we all have a problem with is we try to do things by ourselves, and that's not the way to go. So on to the happy part, I guess. Um, to move on, God is actually the one planning out everything for you. Now. Obviously, I didn't see it at the time because I was in a dark place, but as I look back at myself then and there, I realized that God was literally working through me without me even realizing it or wanting to, you know? Because when my dad passed away, I guess, like, I hate to think about it, but if it wasn't for his passing, I would not be where I am now, which is closer to God and by his side. He's by my side every day. So, I mean, I'm grateful that the situation turned out the way it did with him passing and me just being close to God, but I just hate that it had to turn out that way. But, you know, if God needs your attention, God's going to get your attention. Just know that. I didn't know that what he was, I didn't know what he was preparing for me for. I still don't know what he was preparing me for. Maybe it's to talk about, like, this right now. Maybe it's for something four years from now. Maybe it's something I got to do in college. I don't know. I don't know, if, and I'm probably not going to know in that moment, but I know that it's for something, because God just doesn't do things to you to make you fall apart, and that's not the way he works. He, he works like you, we all know, we're his clay. He molds us. When he molds us, it's going to become a beautiful pot or a beautiful vase or whatever. It's going to be something beautiful in the end, and it's going to be useful for something. So, I would just, in that moment, Back to my dad, in that moment when I lost him, and it took me like a few weeks to kind of get over myself. I grew up. I grew up really fast, really, really fast. Um, 15 year old me, 16 year old me now. I grew up. I had to take care of things. There's one less person in the household, so I had to take care of things that my mom couldn't take care of anymore. My mom got really sick as well, but she's still kicking, she's still here. Um, you know, she's a she's fire, I don't know. She's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's where I get it from. But uh, yeah, she's great. My brother had to grow up. I mean, I know a lot of you guys, a lot, a lot of you guys know my brother. I'm so sorry. But he, I 
I mean, he's great. I mean, I love him. I love him. I won't say that to his face, but I love him. Um, yeah, he's stepped up to become the father figure in my life. He's stepped up to become the big brother figure in all of my life and to a lot of your lives too. I mean, a lot, I know that the, the people that know him look up to him and he doesn't know it, but I tell him all the time. You know, he's happy. He, he loves to come here. People think he's not here, but he likes to think that he might here too, but I don't know. That's just him. That's how he, that's how he is. Um, so everybody grew up. I grew up. My mom changed. My brother changed. And God was just doing something undercover in my life. To cap it all off, God will know. God will know when you are the most prepared. Like I mentioned before, I don't know what he's preparing you for. It could be for this very moment. It could be for 10 years from now. All I know is that in that moment that God has prepared me for, I will be ready. Because had I not gone through what I had gone through in the past, I would never, ever be able to do anything. Anything. <coughs> I get out here, I come here to school every day when I play sports. I, I used to play sports just to look good and be muscular and intimidating and whatnot. And, you know, and I succeeded. Yes. So you guys still scared of me. I don't know why. You don't have to be scared of me. I'm not, I don't like Um. But yeah, but now I come here and I play sports and I do things that I do, but I don't do it for myself, I do it for God. I do it because he's shown me ways to do things in a new perspective. And it all goes back to when my dad left, like, left me, like when he left our family and he's in a better place now. It's just, God's preparing me to do something with my life and he needed my dad to not be there anymore for me to really step into that position. And I feel like, I, mean, I feel like that's really true. But I feel like also when that moment that you're prepared for happens, you won't know that it's happening. I mean, it'll be like any other day. Like, someone can, someone, like, I know I won't say any names, but a friend of mine had lost her friend. I think it was last year, two years ago, I can't remember the date. Um, but she lost her friend. She was a really, 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 really bad place. And I knew that she can turn to anybody because no one went through what she wanted to do except for me. And I have to be that friend that stepped up for her. And, you know, she's, she's, she's doing good now. I mean, she still has her moments where there's days where little things remind her, reminds her of her friends passing, but I want to do what I can to really, like, step up for her. Yeah. And this, I feel like I wouldn't be able to be that good friend if I did not go do what I want to do. So it's just little things like that that, God prepares you for that you don't realize until after you go through them, and then you realize, oh my gosh, I would never been able to go through that. So, so everything after everything I went through, you think God got planned out, God is actually one planning everything for you, God will know when you're the most prepared. I feel like the verse that really goes with my topic is Jeremiah 10 and 11. I know a lot of people have heard that verse, you know, you go through the yearbook, you see a favorite verse, small scene, Everybody, everybody knows it. But it's my life first for this very reason that after I lost my dad, this is the one verse. I mean, I literally flipped open the Bible because I had nothing to do. I, I was so broken. I flipped open the Bible, Jeremiah 20 and 11. And I'm like, I literally, like, I read it and I just stopped. I was like, I looked up at my God. I was like, you did this on purpose, didn't you? Like, you know, kind of like, this is one thing that I'm going to read real quick. It says,
and not only for the seniors, but for the juniors and underclassmen and everybody. You guys are preparing you for something. You guys might be juniors. I know you're, being, you're ready to become the leaders of this school. I know that's exciting. It's scary. It's going to fly by. Just, just let me you know. Um, but God is going to prepare you for something. God is going to really prepare you for something. And don't think, there it goes. Okay. Don't think that you have your own life prepared because you don't. You do not have a plan. You do not have it planned out. Trust me, you don't have it planned out. Twelve year old me thought I had it planned out. So yeah, you don't have it planned out, but God has it all planned out. So just trust Him. Trust Him, and you'll find your purpose. Thank you. Um, and so my, um, another point I have 
is kind of weird, but it's embrace the promises that don't excite you. And there's so many verses in the Bible that talk about how um, you'll go through suffering if you're a Christian, how you go through trials and tribulations. And it's true, because if you're in Christ, like he promised that, that's going to happen. Um, embracing those promises reassures you that this isn't some strange thing happening to you, like God planned this, like it's going to happen. But I think what's so cool is it makes you a witness of his promises, that you get to look back and see what God has done and what he will do in the future, like going through all those hard times. Um, and so I have a verse, it's 1 Peter 1.8. It says, you love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. And I love that because there's so many times in life where you don't see God at all. You don't see God in broken relationships. You don't see God in starving people. You don't see God in school shootings. And it's like, how can there be a God when all these horrible things are happening? But it's like, in times like that is when you look and reflect on all the promises that God has already fulfilled in your life and that he's going to bring you through this time. Um... And so then I have another point that's embrace the promises that do excite you. And God is God. He cares. Like the fact that he like, died for us, like we're so not worthy of him. And that he loves us so much that he gave us these promises that so that we can enjoy life. It's just so cool. And there's so many verses um, that says, like there's one that says, John 15, 7, your wish will be granted. Romans 8, 28, all things will work together. And there's so many verses that say, all and every and whatever, and they seem so huge and unrealistic, and it's so hard to believe, but like, if God promised them, they're true. Like, why are we doubting? Like, don't doubt God and His promises. And, um, it's true because God said it. Don't allow fear. Don't allow doubt. Don't let not being able to wrap your mind around a promise God's given you, um, to keep you from standing on a promise. Believe in stand. Live with expectation. God wants you to trust Him. Believe He will fulfill His word and power in your life. And, um, like I said, like, looking back at just the three years here at Kings, like, obviously, like, I've really grown Christ, and I've really tried to step out of my comfort zone. And so I feel like, looking back, there are so many people here who say that they're Christians, and you are, and you read the Bible, or you pray, and you listen to Bible class, but you feel like just sharing Him isn't your thing. And you feel like you don't have a voice, what you say doesn't matter. But in reality, it does. Every single one of you have the voice to speak about God, and he's equipped you, and he has promises to back up um, being able to equip you. Like he says that he gives you wisdom, he can use you, he made you uniquely, he gave you spiritual gifts, he can use every single one of you to fulfill his promise. And just being in that promise, you can look back and see everything that he's done, and he showed me that in so many areas just this year, and that's like mainly why I want to share it, but um, also it like doesn't matter who you are or what you've done, or who you're friends with, like, just step out and say yes to God's promises. Like, God wants you to trust Him. Like, and there's nothing bad about that. Like, you're not taking a risk. Like, God promises it. It's going to come true. And so, um, I promise that if you believe and trust God, everything will work together, and you can reflect back and look at what He's done. And so, I wrote this down. Um, Throw your doubts and insecurities down and stay on His promises. In order to see the promises of God, you have to let go of what you're holding on to. In order to see God work divinely in your life, you must throw down your comfort zone. In order to receive validation on your calling, you have to let go of what you're holding on to. He doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the call. So, I challenge you guys to get up and live for God. Believe His promises now. Know that his plan is absolutely perfect for you. Just simply say yes to an opportunity that he gives you and live in the promised freedom that you can live in. And I want to leave you guys with a verse. It's Joshua 23, 14. It says, Now I'm about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled. Not one has failed.
us if you allow me, Lord God. Dear God, I thank you for today. Lord, I thank you that we have the opportunity to hear your word. Uh, God, I pray that every word that I speak would be directly from you and that somebody would be touched today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so, today what I'm going to be talking about is out of 2 Kings chapter 6. And uh, one of my favorite stories in the Bible comes from this. And it's about a man named Elisha. And Elisha is a follower of God. And there's also a guy named the king of Syria. Not named him, but the king of Syria. And uh, what happens in the story is the king of Syria is planning these attacks against the Jews. Um, so much to the point in his back bedroom where no one can hear him. But somehow, Elisha knows what he's saying. And it's because God is giving him a picture of what it is that he's saying. So before the attacks are even carried out, he can know what's going to happen and stop it. And it gets to the point, obviously, where this guy's freaked out of his mind because somebody knows what he's saying. Um, so this guy's like the best battleship player of all time. Um, but anyway, so the king eventually sends an army out to go kill Elisha to end him. And what happens is Elisha's sleeping and... He wakes up by a servant who awoke him, and the servant comes to him freaking out and says, Dude, we're about to get killed by this army. Do something. And Elisha says, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I think somebody in this room needs to hear that. Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. It goes on in verse 17 to say that he prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord to open the servant's eyes, and he did. And when he did, he saw chariots of fire and horses surrounding Elisha. The Lord fights our battles. Today, I just want to share quick, uh, three quick things, and they all have to do with the word assurance. I think that's a very important word, because uh, we want to be assured, right? We want to be confident in what it is that we hope for. Uh, the first point is assurance of self-worth. It's interesting to me that God... The one who literally spoke the galaxies into existence chooses to fight for sinners. Like, man, out of anything that he could have chose to have worship him, he chose us. And I think he did that for a reason, because we're made in his image, and we were made for him. When it looked like all hope was lost, God said, no, I'm not done with you yet. From the world's eyes, it looked like there was no way out, but God had a different plan. And I think there's people in this room who when you look around, all you see is the enemy. But I believe God put me here today to tell you it's not over and God's in control. Don't give up. I pray that just as the young man had his eyes open, that we could have our eyes open and see God's abundant goodness and power, even in our darkest circumstances. God, hoped, God helped Elisha and give, gave him eyes to see what others could have, and I pray we do the same. It tells me that God loves sinners, and he didn't have to fix Elisha before he helped him. Because Elisha was in a surrender, living a life of surrender. God immediately helped him and answered his request. The second point I want to share is assurance and peace with God. I think peace is something also that uh, we want to have, like a peace in our soul and a fulfillment. And God gives us that peace. We can have peace with him himself. And how cool is that? One thing that this story tells me is that we can have peace with God and assurance in our circumstance. Even though the enemy may not go anywhere or he may not disappear, we can have a greater awareness of who's on our side. Um, in 2 Kings 16, Elisha said, Before you even saw the army, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I can assure you that with God, definitely, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. You know, if I'm being honest, I've had to struggle mentally with having clarity and feeling like it's so hard to see God, and maybe some of you here are there today. But I want to encourage you to keep looking to God. Seek His face. I know that because of Jesus, He's given me peace and comes to fulfill me so much to the point of overflow and give me a peace that this world cannot compare to. In my own life, from walking through my dad's cancer, I know what it's like to have darkness close in on you. But I believe in God who illuminates the darkness, and who demons flee at the mention of his name, and it is in that that I trust. The last thing I want to share is uh, assurance of God-enabled sight. 
Uh, there's probably some people here who are affected by a condition called color blindness. Um, and it's interesting to me the differences in sight that they have. Like they still see the same thing, but it's just we have a different perception of what's there. And my question to you guys today is could it be possible to see the same thing or the same struggle but have a different perception of an outcome? I think sometimes we can just get so caught up in each piece of our puzzle and the curves and ridges that we forget what it looks like to give it to God to mend it all together. Um, I believe we have a picture on the slide of a picture. That's what it's supposed to look like. But if you go back to the beginning, maybe you guys are feeling a little bit like this. Maybe your life is looking a little bit just like you have lines everywhere and you're not really sure what it's going to look like or how God can even use it. But as we go forward and we lay it at the feet of Jesus, I pray it looks something like this as it comes into full power. So my encouragement to you guys today, this, this is my last point, I just want to encourage you to keep looking, ask God to give you spiritual eyes, and just as Elisha didn't sat back, set back in fear, but he moved on the attack and trusted God. Uh, I'm going to pray real quick, and then Mr. will come up and dismiss us. God, I thank you for today, Lord, I thank you that it's our last day. Uh, seniors, pray that you bless the underclassmen, and Lord, I pray that um, we can apply these truths that were said by each one of us today to our lives. I thank you that um, you have the big picture in mind, God, and that you are so good. I pray that we could realize that, that we could walk out and trust you, God. It's in Jesus' name.